Hey, it is all Hallow's Eve. It is the night when, uh, well, the veil grows thin. The spirits of the dead are going to return. Is that how it's going to work? Uh, is that the day of the dead? Sp- the, the, the spirits of the dead return, and they, they're they going to – what are you going to do, wear a mask to scare them away? Uh, the celebrations that occur – all Hallows Eve uh, for the millions and millions of Americans and those around the world. It's not going to mean a whole lot. Nobody's going to really look into the history of uh, this deep, dark, uh, occult-oriented uh, holiday. N- no one's going to look there. Uh, they're, they're, they're instead uh, going to be out like yesterday, uh, dressed in all of the costumes. They're going to eat candy. See, when I grew up as a kid, Halloween, you got to realize, those listening today, and thank you, you and I might understand, you and I might even realize the spiritual nature, you and I might even realize the prophetic, biblical prophetic um, developments of the rise of the dark side. And what this means, this night means to them, what this night means to the satanic, richly abused worldwide. Now we might, uh, we're going to go there a little bit, but, but for the kid like myself, for the kid growing up in Akron, Ohio, you know, five, six, and seven, the entire neighborhood went um, trigger treating. I didn't have any idea what that was. All I knew was uh, we were dressed up. Whatever we were dressed up like, I don't even remember some of the things. We didn't have the kinds of funds. So kind of a makeshift, I remember being dressed up like a bum. I mean, I remember being dressed up like Casper the Ghost, like Zorro. You know, the days in which, um, you know, as a kid growing up, I mean, you get outside of church, so we just did that. Why does a kid want to do Halloween uh, trick-or-treating? Well, because of the candy. Let's get down to the facts. If you go door-to-door and they give you a rock in every single house, nobody's going to want... I mean, think of a neighborhood that all they give is rocks. How many kids are going to go down that uh, neighborhood and open up their little their little pillowcase, their little bag? Not going to happen. So what's happened is on the outward, it's become kind of a... It, well, there's hedonism involved, of course. Party till you puke, a uh, n- night of dancing and drinking, day of the dead, masks, uh, masquerade, uh, even last night and the night before in places that we were the waitresses at known restaurants well they're all they're all dressed up in costumes and so that's what it is to the most uh, it is all about a holiday it is all about um partying it is all about the candy it is all about uh you know just funny stuff uh, it's it's rivaling the idea of christmas in the sense of look at the neighborhoods look at the houses look at the caskets and the witches and the dead people and the zombies and the spider webs and the spiders and and all the rest of that stuff that are now put out on, um, you know, people want to drive by and look at people's houses. So it is in the minds of the most, not a big thing. That's because uh, the real sense, the real the real issue of this, it, it goes way, way back. I even believe it goes way back to Sumer. And I'm going to mention uh, some folks that have given me some materials about all the way back um, in, in the Old Testament days, uh, this festival and the festival continues to rise. Um, listen, the dark side continues, though it has many um, masks along the way, blood sacrifice is um, what it's all about. The drawing of powers and the advance of the dark side and the keeping of what they have gained. Tonight, what does Pergamum have to do with All Hallows Eve? What does um, the Day of the Dead, what does, uh, what does uh, well, what are you going to do tonight? Late night, what are they going to do? Could it be that 40 million on a global scale, in the most secretive of ways, whether in the underground of the Vatican, whether, you know, every city, United States, every location. Is there really a Luciferic coven? Are they really going to do blood sacrifice? Are they really going to gather in robes and sing and or chant in, in languages and twilight? Language? What's going to be happening tonight? What's, listen, what is the Christian going to do tonight? I mean, that's another thing. Just close the door, lock the locks, and... This is the Ragged Edge Radio Broadcast. This is Russ Dizdar. Glad to be with you tonight on this night because uh, trying to make up decisions where we're, we're going where, where I'm going to be later on tonight. A number of areas to go take a look at, a number of things to do. There's a big witch's ball on the other side of um, Pennsylvania. And the team had once had designated we're going to go there to do evangelism. Some say 5,000, 6,000 people are going to show up because uh, the witches are sponsoring. So the witches and the pagans and the Druids and the New Agers 
on a surface level are going to be there. What's going to be there behind the scenes is another story. The Ragged Edge Radio broadcast this week, Monday through Friday. I am uh, suspending just for tonight the series. The series on Revelation, the book, will be on Chapter 14 starting on Tuesday night this week. We're glad to be involved with you. More and more are being um, getting involved in that massive study. And uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go on longer than I ever thought because we spent a lot of days just on uh, chapter 13 alone. The Antichrist, uh, the false prophet, the new order, the powers behind it all, the supernaturalism, the mark of the beast, the image of the beast, the number of the beast. And all of those are up in archives. Main uh, page to go to for everything, shatterthedarkness.net. And uh, we love you tonight. We love you. We thank you that um, there is, in the midst of all the, the, the shrouding and shadows and darkness and, you know, deep down where the, the fangs of darkness really lurk, uh, we're glad for the God of heaven who knows all things and who uh, whose power uh, continues to bring uh, exposure and darkness. So we acknowledge tonight the cross, Christ, the blood of the Lamb. And what does that mean? Well, to the dark side, even though they know, it means the victories of God. It means the redemption of man. It, re- it means that the, the love of God triumphs. That it means that um, a new race of immortals are coming. In Christ, are you one of them? It begins now the moment Jesus comes into your life. Listen, I have a page in front of me about uh, witches that switched, Satanists that switched, the testimony of a former witch, testimony of ex-witches I'm seeing on this one page, testimony of Annie, a former occult member, uh, an ex-witch, former um, witch and ghost hunter, talks about their conversion to Christ. And page after page after page after page. Listen, every single believer in Christ, there's kind of a X in your story somewhere. You once did something. It's uh, now X'd out. It's, It's gone. And uh, behold, all things have become new in Christ. Well, the light, the darkness, if I was to ask you tonight, do you feel the darkness? Many people say yes. But let me ask you this. Do you feel the light? You feel the, uh, because that's that's another side of the story. Everyone, and, and I'm talking about believers, talk about feeling the oppression, feeling the darkness over your cities, in areas, on days like this, well, there, there's another side of the story. In, in Acts chapter 8, there's a great story of someone that I would believe, if we had 10 million Phillips, uh, that would be a, a massive, I mean, I cannot tell you what would occur. Um, on a global scale, on a national scale, if we had millions um, of those who are just like Philip. So, Let's continue to pray. Let's continue to give our lives. Thank you for the letter that comes in. Uh, individual writing me, talking about listening all the time. They said, count them in. They want to be one of the 10 million fierce. Uh, just like Philip in Acts chapter 8. Now take a look at the city. Darkness, demons, um, oppression, captivation by the darkness. The kingdom of God comes in through one young individual. That is just uh, just just unleashes and and look what occurs. You take a read Acts chapter eight if you get a chance later on. Uh, out of the darkness into the light, uh, individually uh, by a family. That's what's uh, great about um, when when God gets a hold of a family member and then uh, all of a sudden they bring Jesus to the rest of the family and it goes on and on and families and family lines can change. Everything can change when you come to Christ. He loves you more than all. He knows you more than anyone. And he desires you beyond any any person, any individual has ever desired you. God does. There's danger in the air tonight. There's danger in the world that we're living in today. There's danger because most don't understand, and even in the body of Christ, the overwhelming majority of leadership do not understand that it's not just Satan doing things here and there, but there is a massive, by design, global agenda that is, um, that it, well, it's, it's developed in the last 70 years, more than ever, in the frog in the kettle approach way. And the, um, the development, the rise, the strengthening, the, well, it, it's, it's, it's as the insight God has given us. If you want to see over the mountain, if you want to see, if you want to see the future, you got to have your heart and mind filled with biblical prophecy. And then you're going to know 
not only what God is going to do that will jazz your life in the sense of strengthening and exciting and knowing and you stand there and you know and you're going to see the face of God, but you're also going to get the warning uh, where as God unveils the uh, progress um, and the future of the dark side in the world. And that's, that's horrendous. So tonight's going to play a part of that. I mean, we could talk about everything else. We can go back to Sal Wayne, go back to the Druids, go back to the Gaelic, uh, go back, go back all the way to Britannia, uh, all the way through the Romans. And 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 as uh, somebody just sent me a video, by the way, and I really appreciate that too because it uh, it has a, a pastor taking the actual celebration of the darkness, you know, all the way back past into the Old Testament times and the old gods. Uh, of the Old Testament. I mean, I think a lot of us as believers have, uh, we don't talk about the old gods of the Old Testament other than in a historic sense. Question, did they die? No. Um, did they just fade away? No. Uh, do they still operate and look for people to open the doors again? You better believe it. Let me give you another thing just quickly. Thank you, Deborah, very much. Uh, a quick uh, video that was sent to me concerning Jonathan Kahn um, on with... Um, well, he's on, on a video explaining the connection between the the throne of Satan, Pergamum. If you remember the scriptures where Satan has his throne, stop there for a minute and think. We already did this in the book of Revelation, Revelation 13. When the rise of a new order and the Antichrist himself rises, here's what it says. Um, the dragon referring to the manifest presence of Satan. Is going to give him power, going to give him authority, and going to give him a throne. There's always been a sense of a development of thrones. If you look at the history of the Greeks and the Romans, if you go back around the world um, pre-flood, uh, where they've uh, gone back and, and have done the archaeological digs, you're going to find the ziggurats and the and, and the pyramids and and the old temples like this. Sure, the 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 fallen angels, the, the demonic entities in the skies. Uh, interacting. The architecture is Nephilim, and the Nephilim were there. Pergamum has a connection between the demon gods of the sky and the Nephilim, the giants, the godmen, small g, even the ones with the snake legs. I mean, half man, half snake. How uh, high bred can you get? Pergamum, as John the Con was saying, and I believe is absolutely true, we've been there in, in, in per the, the temple in, in Germany, Berlin. And in our trip to Vadelsberg, we stopped to go there and, and to see, all we got to see was the outside. Of course, you can see the pictures and everything else. Bottom line of the story concerning Pergamum quickly is simply the throne, it was considered the throne where Satan had his throne. In a place of power, there was actually a temple built. Uh, it is the, um, it was dedicated to the Greek gods of Zeus. Uh, Pergamum altar was um, shipped out of the Ottoman Empire. Now here's here's the interesting the thing that I think that Jonathan Kahn did well, and you know some of the sites that I've looked at um, all uh, connect this uh, also because you have a but here's the bigger connection too. Jonathan Kahn connects um, Pergamum and its presence uh, wherever its presence was, it spurred on great destruction. Now you have uh, this German archaeologist Karl Hum Hummen. He began excavating in 1878. Now, he did this, um, and Kaiser Wilhelm, who was deeply an occultist, his library, you can do a study on that. Well, the development of the throne of Satan being placed in Berlin, um, its erection celebrated in, in, in Berlin in 1902. Um, did, did, you know, did you know what occurred then? Uh, I believe it was the birth of Adolf Hitler. And Adolf Hitler was uh, elected chancellor in Germany. He became the dictator and ordered the construction. Uh, the, 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 listen, this is, where, this is where Hitler stood in a place of um, a gateway of ancient great power, dark power. And there very well could have been the, I mean, where did the master race come from? The idea of the master race, I mean, this would have been tied up into possibly the influence 
um, of the of the altar and the temple. You're talking about a temple constructed. The architecture is demonic, satanic, uh, Nephilim oriented. It is a place to uh, house the powers and p p play tribute uh, to the to the gods in the sky, and also the concept of uh, the god men, the god men. So out of its placement in Berlin and out of the development of the uh, the rise of Hitler and this connection and that's where he stood, you have this entire um, destructive uh, development of the Nazis and the goal of a master race. Uh, there's no question in my mind also, so I agree with Jonathan Kahn on this issue very clearly, that there is a clear gateway opened up in that day uh, that brought uh, a doorway of dark powers, let alone if you go around the rest of the city, you're going to see more. Um, get, watch out for ancient architecture. If it's um, designed by the dark side to open gateways, honor demon gods and goddesses in the sense of um, the fallen ones, then you have doorways and gateways. And you have places that are charged. And, uh, you know, in the old days, Josiah would have destroyed these and ground them down to powder. There are people that think, well, these are great structures of architecture. Not if they were designed by the demons and by the fallen ones to house real presence and to be a gateway. Well, in, in the book of uh, Revelation, it's a place where Satan had his throne. Where uh, persecution and killing of Christians would occur. And then it goes um, there to Germany. And then it was taken after the war to Russia. And and, and, and what about the onslaught in Russia? Uh, more millions killed in the Russian purge than even in the camps in Germany. Nazi Germany, correct? And yet the temple is back where it's at. And, and so the connection between gateways... Um, and dark presence, the gateways and dark powers, the gateways and, uh, and, and, well, listen, even tonight. So tonight you can look around and say, you know what? I think it's just, uh, you know, I mean, look at the neighborhoods, look at the stores, look at the restaurants, Look at the party that's going to be going on. So in a lot of ways, it is a hedonistic oriented culture just to, you know, and, and people are going to dance with the darkness and most are going to have no idea what it really means. You know, we can go back all the way back uh, to Samhain. We can go all the way back. Let, let me just give you um, from the witch's mouth, Samhain, the thinning of the veil between the worlds. Now, this is, comes from a witch. The witches know, the druids know. I mean, even if you're in Santeria, Paulo, the Abaqua, if you're uh, the saint, the saint of death, even New Agers on a global scale, as Barbara Marks Hubbard has been sending, I get emails um, talking about their convergences and their meetings and their gatherings and so forth. So please understand that even New Agers, hundreds of millions of them on a global scale, will see tonight as a thinning, a place where they can connect with the energies, a place in time when they can meditate easier, engage the powers, uh, their crystals, their charged objects, lit up better, um, go to the so-called sacred places, uh, Mount Shasta, Sedona, uh, Joshua Tree. You can go to so many places and it's supposed to all be lit up. What about what about Serpent Mound and Circle Mound and the places of the ancient Nephilim? You better believe Chechen is going to be lit up tonight. And so tonight, when you think in terms of New Agers on a global scale, uh, I don't know, maybe close to a billion. Many of them know that tonight is the night of gathering. Tonight is the night of convergence. Tonight is the night to repeat the Luciferic invocation. Take a take a take a, a study on the web. Luciferic invocation connected to uh, connected to um, Helena Blavatsky and uh, to uh, to Alice Bailey to the United Nations. The the Luciferic invocation has been repeated inside. The United Nations building numerous times. So there is on that side, e even those who are in uf ufologists and abductees, this is a time in which they think that there'll be more sightings. This is a time in which there's going to be more activity. So whether it's the the day, you know, whether it's the saint of death in Mexico, whether it's um, druids or, or witches in the many different varieties, by the way, 
the modern day witches are not like the Italian sturgy. I mean, there there there's a, there's a whole different variety, and though they try to um, uh, shove off the the dark side of it all, where do the powers come from? Like the young witch inside the bar when we were out evangelizing. And so I was sitting there at a table, crystal ball candles. She was doing readings for money, probably about 22 years old. People would go up and pay money and get readings from her. And I was, uh, got close enough to listen to what she was doing. And then I finally just sat down in front of her and began to ask her um, about what she does and, you know, and uh, how real are her abilities. You know, she said right away, her abilities come from her grandmother and her mother. Handed down from her grandmother and her grandmother and her mother, she understood that the ability she had to read things um, and the energy she felt. You know, I finally asked her, "Where do you, where's where do you think the source of these energies and entities are coming from?" She looked right at me. She says, "I'm afraid they're coming from the dark side." I got to share the gospel with the witch. I got to share the message. Over the years, we've seen witches and others and Satanists come to Christ. We've seen some pretty dramatic, demonized people that in, in the occult, into Satanism, open doors. And seeing the power of God engage the demonic darkness and them coming out of that darkness and their lives utterly changed in an instant, including their destiny. So tonight, it's not a little thing. It's not just a candy bar in a bag that's been brought home and you got to check it for razor blades or poison. It's not just that. It's not a night just when there's going to be people out on the road drinking so much that there's going to be, you know, the officers are going to be out everywhere checking. Here's what the witch says, quote, like most Americans of my generation, I look forward to trigger treating at all hollows Eve for many years. It was fun to get dressed up and to wander the neighborhood with a plastic pumpkin. Feeling it uh, grow heavier with candy and other treats. In those days, the treats were wonderful. Homemade cookies, apple uh, candied apples, caramel pop popcorn balls. My mother made these homemade goodies each year too. And the neighborhood kids looked forward to trick or treat at our house. Halloween was a century holiday for me then and still is. The colorful costume parades, the chill in the air, the crunch of the leaves underfoot, juicy apples and homemade donuts, the smell of burning leaves and autumn bonfires. These sensual memories mean autumn to me. Walking home from a friend's house in the early uh, darkness, the sight of a the sight of a tree without leaves against the violet uh, sky filled me with spooky dread, but also a sense of awe. And and Halloween was always the point when it was clear that winter was really coming. You had to prepare a costume that you could uh, layer with extra sweater underneath in case it got cold. Some, uh, on some level, the gathering of sweets mirrored the hoarding of nuts by the uh, crazed squirrels. I mean, I'm throwing a, I got four of those squirrels in the backyard, and that's well, they're doing that all over the place. I've watched them drag pumpkins, uh, squirrels, and, and, and little by little eating them until there's nothing left. And the squirrels are loving it out there right now. She goes on to say this. The crazed squirrels scrambling through the fallen leaves. Uh, children dressed as uh, fantastical beings uh, in gowns and silvery suits and clothing we'd soon forego in favor of the woolly skirts and itchy pullovers. Uh, one last decadent night of hell raising before hibernation. Listen again, quote from the witch. One last decadent night of hell raising before the hibernation. Halloween came one week after my birthday, and it was like a celebration nonstop week. Uh, but being practi uh, a practicing witch means a very different perspective on this holiday as an adult. Now, that's what I want to get to. Even this witch that I'm reading, quoting from, says that. In reference to the Sawain, the thinning of the veils uh, uh, between the worlds. That's the goal of the dark side. That's the goal of the writings of Alice Bailey, the externalization of the hierarchy, 1937, where the demonic declares a, a thinning of the veil until finally uh, they'll break the veil and come over as never before. You gotta understand the, uh, the drive of that side. Who initiates? They do. Who answers? The human race. The dark side wants global interface. 
That is a biblical um, uh, revelation. That is a biblical overall teaching. The dark side on a global scale wants human interface. So the witch here that I'm reading is one of those who are interfacing, connecting. Here's what she says, quote, but being a practicing witch means I have a very different perspective on this holiday as an adult. For modern witches, Halloween is known as Samhain, a Scottish term meaning summer's end that marks the halfway point between autumn equinox and winter solstice. We also call it Hallows or sometimes All Souls Night. Growing up a Catholic, I sometimes attend churches on All Souls, listen, All Saints Day, the day after Halloween. And stop for a second. Did you see this? Practicing witch, grows up Catholic, and yet there's still a connection. So they still sometimes go to the All Saints Day because that was the goal of the Catholic Church and the Orthodox was to kind of um, override the celebration of the Halloween, the All Hallows Eve night, the, the fire festivals and all the rest. Uh, the goal, All Saints Day, was uh, to, to, to shift everything, didn't do very well, uh, and just uh, have something that was completely, um, you know, real, you know, Catholic. So the, the witch, though, having memory, and here's, here's what I see immediately. You could be inside of a religious system that does not give you clearly the gospel of the living Christ. That's why it's dangerous to be within a religious system and not know God or the power of God. To be inside of a religious system to where everything is mystical and the only um, spiritual ambience comes from the stained glass windows, the candles, and the sounds of an organ. If that's all there is to um, spirituality, there's no reason why millions have walked away over the years uh, from Catholicism and other Orthodox systems and dead systems uh, to try to get in touch with something real. The problem is, on the other side of the fence, the other side masqueraded has been waiting all along. And seeks those who are empty. And seeks those who want something. They have no trouble wanting to um, bring a replacement. Isn't that what the Antichrist is all about? Quote, I sometimes, this is the witch, this is the witch. I sometimes attended church on All Souls Night Day, a day after Hall Halloween, and as a child, uh, didn't quite understand the connection between the two days, and assumed the church held their mass the day after simply because the night of Halloween was just too busy. And who would want to go to church when they could go door to door gathering candy? End of quote. You see the you see the principle? I mean, millions of kids are going door to door dressed. They're they're laughing. They're eating candy, sweets, a smell, uh, crunching leaves, squirrels out. I mean, there's nothing bigger to them. This is why I would ask the pastors, this is why I would ask the believers, when it seems like um, the church is but a dull, boring reading of a Sears catalog, like going to the dentist knowing you're going to have your teeth pulled out next, <laughs> when you could be out going door to door in costumes, laughing, running, seeing the squirrels, getting candy, trading candy, and all that stuff. In the context of the hedonistic celebration on a, on a cultural level that has, has well, they, they've marketed it. They, they, listen, the, the marketing, the money-making, the billions in, in connection with uh, like Christmas and other holidays. I mean, there's no question about the, 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 the marketing side of this, the, the, the money side of all of this. No question about, at all. There, there, there's hundreds of millions to be made in the context of it. So what do you do in the midst of this? 
What does one do that knows clearly Christ in the light of God and the truth, knows the difference between uh, the living God and what demons and dark side and all? What do you do then? D does the body of Christ, does the believer go silent? What about at work when everybody's dressing up? What about at school when everybody's dressing up? What about when you're invited to all those parties and they're all parties and everybody's going and everybody's celebrating and what are you doing? You're just a, you're just dead wood. You're just some dead religious you know a dope that's uh, boring and you might as well go sit on a rock here's what the witch says quote these days i tend to celebrate this feast of the dead in somber and often unusual ways the coven i work with has an elaborate cycle of rituals beginning in the spring and culminating at Sawain with a rite called the harvest home in which a young harvest lord is symbolically slain by his co co consort as a sacrificial offering to fertilize the crops and balance the cycle of life death and rebirth stop so kind of a sympathetic magic kind of a kind of a um, a dramatization of a human sacrifice that's what she does nowadays little girl growing up Catholic that didn't have any reality in her life, uh, but, but candies and leaves and squirrels that made uh, Halloween fun to her. Now a witch in their coven celebrates, as many do around the world, a death and a resurrection, a death, a, a sacrifice of blood given and being offered like they did in the days of the Druids, like they did, that's what it's all about. Here's what she says, quote, it is symbolically slain, the, 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 har the harvest lord, the young guy, boy, slain by his consort as a sacrificial offering to fertilize the crops and balance the cycle of life, death, and rebirth. The, the eternal return. I've been to large public rituals where guests were invited to speak of their loved ones who had passed over. I've attended vigils that were peaceful and serene with candles everywhere and plates of food left for the dead and the beings of the other world. Some witches celebrate this holiday as a Celtic New Year and do rituals and rites appropriate for the new beginnings. This year, Samhain occurs just after the new moon and the sign of the Serpico. A very um, powerful timing. The sun is also just entered in the sign of Scorpio, rather, and a sign associated with the dead and regeneration. Now, let me just stop there. I want to read more about. I mean, you can read a thousand stories. She took, goes into talking about the Day of the Dead. She she connects um, the occult underground. There's no question about that. Uh, and so, here's what I want you to understand today. And I could give you um, quotes from uh, Doreen Valentine and uh, Margaret Adler, Adler, the witch, and, and and Sharon Graham, and and I'm looking at uh, Crowley and and. Uh, and all of the connections of occultism, New Age, Wiccans, uh, of other, every branch, pagans. And, well, like this one girl says, I was born in the night of Samhain, where the barrier between the worlds is whisper thin. And when magic, old magic, sings its heady, sweet song to anyone who cares to hear. Can recall, once a witch. The Day of the Dead. The veil grows thin. So I say to her tonight, you know, halfway into this, and 30 minutes left to speak to you a little bit, uh, knowing that uh, late night tonight, and it's already begun everywhere, and actually over the weekend our team has been out, uh, I, thank the, I thank God for friends and team members like we had this last weekend that went out. And they were out um, protecting uh, satanic virtually abused individuals and, and, and housing them and keeping them away and from, from being taken. Being out there going to visit young people in houses where rituals have been done and where charged objects are and witnessing and sharing the gospel and seeing the hand of God in the midst of things. I and mean, what do you do during the weekend uh, when it's like this? What do you do during this time of the year? I mean, what does a believer do? You can go dark, you can go silent, you can just go, you know, that's, that, that's the dark side. That is evident of the dark side's preeminence then, that they have gained, that they've brought suppression to the body of Christ, that they've silenced the Christian. And that outrages me. I don't know about you. I don't know about you, but, but it outrages me to see the silence of the light in contrast to the celebration 
of the masqueraded razor blade darkness. So I'm reading the story, listen, Occult View, and OccultView.com, the hidden truth behind Halloween's evil witch, shows a picture of an evil witch, tombstones, pumpkins in a yard. It calls this, the enduring symbols of Halloween is the evil bloom fly, flying witch. The witch has been transformed into a harmless cartoon-like image and nobody takes it seriously. Did you hear what I just said? I'm reading somebody else. See, that's what I'm trying to get. Nobody really, even the body of Christ, does not take these days very seriously. Don't talk to us about Auschwitz. Don't talk to us about the seat of Satan, Pergamum, and its possible uh, gateway of powers that influenced Hitler and the Nazis and then the millions that died and taken to Russia and then the purge of millions upon millions upon millions. I mean, darkness doesn't want to be found out. It just wants to do its nasty works. And many people just don't want to see any evil, hear any evil, and try not to speak any evil. And by that, they give free reign to the razor blade blood and guts of evil and its agenda, whether it's masquerading and uh, tantalizing the culture. Well, let me read, let me read what, you, what it says here again. This is a different article altogether from the occultview.com. However, like Halloween's other monsters, there's a hidden element of truth to the witch. Devil-worshipping witch of the Inquisition uh, never really existed. Well, that's not really true completely. And uh, was the creation of the church, uh, while well, the, the Inquisition wasn't by the body of Christ, it was by a religious institution corrupted uh, the Catholic system. That's, what, that's who did the Inquisition. It has nothing to do with the New Testament. That had nothing to do with Jesus of Nazareth. Nothing. So here's what it says, quote, yet the hidden truth behind the facade of the evil witch is the concept of the curse. Modernity has left behind belief in such things as a, and a, a good thing it has. Uh, if people realize that curses were actually possible, imagine the chaos in society. <laughs> so this is what this individual does to, tr uh, to, to, to uh, suppose darkness, supposed um, or, or even real darkness or real evil. Here's, what, here's the, the response. Here's the final response. Instead, we transform the power of the curse into a cartoon character and subconsciously take away its power. It's kind of new ages. It's kind of like white magic over dark magic. And it, it's not, it, it, and it doesn't take care of the issue. It, it's the same concept of putting a Band-Aid, a Band-Aid on a bullet wound from a forty-five. Here's what they say when it comes to the darkness of Halloween, the darkness of what's really there. Instead, we transform the power of the curse into a cartoon character and subconsciously take away its power. Consider the fictional Halloween witch and much of the symbolism of Halloween as unconscious talismans of protection against the powers of the spirits. By demeaning them, we diminish them. That can be a greater lie. And I think that is part of the issue that we have. In a culture where the overwhelming majority of Americans and around the world, I mean, there's going to be mass celebrations. We're, we still haven't made the decision yet whether we're going to leave here in a little bit and, and head off to um, the, the ultimate goal was to go and unleash evangelism among thousands and thousands gathering around the witch's ball on the other side of Pennsylvania, P Pittsburgh, and, and um, then see what's going to happen afterwards. Um, because underneath that and underneath these trappings, what well, comes the real stuff going all the way back to the Old Testament, going all the way back to the Druids, is human sacrifice. Uh, going back to the real darkness, uh, you know, that really uh, lurks in, uh, and the, the, where 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 the gatherings are smaller, but the but the but the 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 attenders are more committed. 
They understand what it's going to be. Let me mention tonight what that what that really means to us here. Uh, without going into a whole lot uh, more uh, of any, any but you 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 can read history of Sal Wayne, history of you go what the Romans did, what the Europeans did, what the Germans did, what the Brits did, what what what, what everybody's done, what the New Agers are doing, what all of them are doing. Bottom line, on a global scale, uh, there there are going to be uh, uh, hundreds of millions of spirits, demons seeking to interface more. As an agenda that God has unveiled is um, is developing in the world to bring seduction politically, economically, militarily, well, to the entire world. Re Revelation 12 is the goal is 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 everyone, all of us. You understand? There's a there's a spiritual attack. It began in the garden, but it continues to the end because he's not gone yet. They're not gone yet, and so there's going to be. There's going to be a, a a new level. Now, the only way they get on this side is by rights. The only way they get into a person's life, that is demons, is by rights. They have to have a topos, a right, a doorway a, a, in which to get in. Now, quickly tonight, I'm going to give you um, the what I, what I believe can be seven ways of knowing whether you have these dark blood rituals being done in your city, your neighborhood. Now, I'm going to say to you in our research, in my research after 30-some years, every city in the United States, in every um, little township, in all the places, I'm going to tell you what I believe with all my heart, that um, dark the kind of coven listed and given in Ezekiel chapter 8 the same connection on a spiritual bloodline that is that has continued through all these years, the serpent has continued guiding people into serpent worship, is going to be happening tonight. It does all Halloweens and, and all the other ritual dates, by the way. I mean, if you just take a look at any of the satanic ritually abused, the, the calendars that have been out for now for years, October 13th through the 30th, preparation for All Hallows' Eve, Samhain, Halloween, abduction, holding and ceremonial preparation of individual for human sacrifice. The 28th and the 30th, Satan High Priest Holy Day related to Halloween. Uh, human sacrifice each day, any any age, male or female. How about October 30th and 31st? All Hallows' Eve. Blood and sexual. Sexual uh, ritual association with demons, animal and or human sacrifice, any age. November 1st, tomorrow night, uh, Satanist High Holy Day, blood, human sacrifice. November 4th, Satanic Revels, um, sexual, uh, girls between 7 and 17. You know where the, the development of that comes from? Some of the, uh, primarily from the ex-Satanists on a global scale. Uh, those from satanic ritual abuse that has developed in uh, well in in the, among the Nazis and throughout Europe as a continuation. I don't have time to go into all that, but um, it, it, the the rise of this in the in, in the late forties fifties here in the United States. So I'm going to tell you again. I believe well over 500 million ritual occurrences have occurred since the fifties on, if not more, because of the numbers. Think in terms of um, the uh, the uh, in your in your neighborhood. There's just some witches out in the backyard. I mean, real ones, and they're and they're really con, you know looking for the spirits, and they're really doing spells, and they're really bringing powers, and they really feel the energies, and entities really show up. Well, that's bad enough in a real sense. What do you do with them when they're here? Um, Where'd you learn the rituals? How'd you learn to do the rituals? See, the dark side gives the rituals to those who are interfacing with them, opening to them, so that they can then repeat those rituals, draw those symbols, draw those circles, do the stuff, repeat the chants, speak in the languages that the demons inspire, so that they can, the human can open the doors to let more of them in. So let's say that in uh, your city, you have a satanic coven that for years have been doing this, and it's secret, it's dark, it's there. There's there's people from political areas and law law areas, and there's a fake preacher, uh, religious or priest there. There's there's many others there. They've all gotten naked. They all put on their robes. They're naked underneath. They're gathering together. The chanting has begun. All the rituals prior in the last number of days have been done. They're gathering all together for this time. Uh, the um, person held is already there and the ritual has been prepped. All of this is for um, appeasing the demonic side to get 
more de- demons and more powers and more more um, uh, favors from. Now, the varieties of Satanism is different in traditional Satanism and non-traditional Satanism and Luciferic Satanism. I mean, the Day of the Dead, this is going to be happening all, I mean, tr- millions and millions in Mexico, South America, they're going to all be doing this tonight. Paying homage to a demon of death and giving it stuff and yielding and offering to it. I mean, this is the mixture. This is what Halloween is like. They're 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 bowing down to a a a, a dirty, dark looking skeleton dressed in a white um, wedding gown. Can you see the mixture? It's darkness dressed up. It's it's darkness dressed up to be playing with your kids. It's darkness dressed up to be um, dancing on the dance floor. It's darkness dressed up handing you a beer. It's darkness dressed up doing. I mean, it's 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 all. That's what the dark side. That's what serial rapists and killers do. They they're nice. They're unassuming. They seem harmless until they switch, and cut your throat, and rape the bodies, and dismember and put them under. Do you understand the depth of this evil that we're talking about? All the way to the Old Testament, all the way through. I mean, it doesn't begin with the Celts. It doesn't just begin there in Ireland or Britannia. It, it goes way back. And I'm going to say that you can see this in the Old Testament. You can see it there in Ezekiel 8, hidden, dark, underground. It's one thing to um, suck the culture in, and that's a big spiritual thing. Look here in the United States. Look there in Europe. Look at the parties. Look at all that's going on tells you one thing. And again, it tells you that darkness can't cram down the throats of the entire culture, the blood and guts of what it really is. No, not yet. That's coming. It has to um, dress up and look candy coated it has to look like cotton candy to hide the razor blades within but their agenda is always the same sooner or later human if they if they begin with with symbolic human sacrifice well the issue is like bohemian grove uh, they'll get there to the real thing that's what the dark side ultimately wants. That's the big door. Man, that's the big door on that side. Every underground Satanist knows this. Every magus, every sorcerer, they know this. Every wizard, they know this. Every satanic real priest knows this. The dark side wants blood, wants blasphemy, wants mockery, wants to um, denigrate, desecrate. That's what they want. Evidences of um, satanic dark rituals in your area. Number one. Now, this is on Dark Rituals, Dark Powers. 14 hours of stuff, all free. Shadowthedarkness.net, right hand side, free training courses. I want to mention this again because everybody, I mean, the first four, three or four of these things, m- most of you are going to say, wow, this is going on. This is what's happening in our city and has been for the last couple of decades. Number one, um, to me anyway, in our, and this goes, this goes to over 30 some years of our um, engagement in the context of kingdom evangelism, investigation and uh, spiritual warfare and dealing with some of the, you know, the underground, dealing with these undergrounders and the victims and so forth. Number one. Um, you feel in the area dark oppression. Uh, the, it seems like an umbrella of oppression and darkness, a satanic uh, darkness over a city area. You, you ever feel that in your city, that it seems like darkness just clouds your city, oppression just clouds your city? That's what it's all about. When 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 Satan uh, had asked to sift the disciples, Jesus said, Simon, Simon, he's asked to sift you guys. Well, then they were attacked. Uh, Acts chapter 8 gives us a picture here of a cities that have dark presence, uninterrupted until P- until Philip came. I mean, darkness can be uninterrupted and continue to grow and sink its teeth into everything until the kingdom of God, the king of heaven, until those uh, in whom he lives and uh, brings uh, the king of the kingdom to an area. Number one, darkness and oppression, the sense of satanic uh, powers and so forth. And I want to say this. There's millions of individuals that would say darkness is in the area. They don't even know that it's demons and the manifestation of the dark side. 
Revelation 12, the manifestation of the dragon. Do a study. Do a study. Number two, where the rise of violence, killings, big drugs, rapes are occurring and nobody seems to be able to stop it. Number three, you've got quite a few possessed people. You got possessed people showing up in the psych wards, in the jails. You know, they don't know what to do with them, drug them, jail them, uh, straightjacket them. Most churches don't know what to do with them, sadly to say. Number four, real satanic, richly abused victims are in your city. They've been to the psych wards, they've been to the counseling centers, they've been to other places. Uh, the older ones, the first generation, 60, but they're around there. The second generations, you know, the 48-year-olds the are there. The, uh, the, the 28 and 30-year-olds are there, third generation. Now in, the, now in the, the kids' psych wards, you've got 8 and 12-year-olds that are SRA that have shown up. If you've got that in your local area, then you've got the covens that develop them. You can't become a satanic, richly abused person. You cannot become DID, as they call it. You cannot be one unless it begins in rituals between those who they are breeding, selectively breeding, to create a new, a new chosen one, a new master race child, a new demonized, um, altered being. They split them. They program them. They demonize them. You, that's in the Black Awakening. That's in the materials. Uh, that's the reality. What do you do? Whether you say, well, I don't know if I believe in, in any of What do you do with the millions that have shown up at psych wards since the uh, late 70s through the 90s to this very day? How come they're in every city, every single place? How come they're everywhere? How come there's next generation, next generation, the 12-year-olds and the 8-year-olds are showing up? Why? Um, and they cannot be there unless... There's an ancient coven that is bloodline to historically to the past that understands how to do this and alter individuals and create these tares, as Jesus called them. If they're in your city, the coven has been there for some time. If they're in your city, it means individuals that are in political areas and maybe religious areas and in professional areas. Um, they're, 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 they're living by day like the Nazis doubling. They're living by day like Ezekiel chapter 8, the 70 elders. They're living by day with these this masquerade that they're part of society. But who they really are is what they are down in the dungeons in the dark places. What they really are is what they are down there in the place of the ritual chamber. If you have SRA victims in your city, you had had, you've had Satan. Listen, we were with somebody, and I'm not talking about any live, we got a lot of live cases. We have people begging to fly in, come in, people begging for us to come there. Uh, there's just not enough individuals to go and deal and understand this. We need you. God would love to send you. Like Isaiah, just say, God, here am I, send me. He'll train you. He'll teach you. It'll be a battle. You, you'll see it'll be a battle. It'll be a battle. And you'll see the victories and the power of God and the grace of God and the mercy of God. You'll see what radical evil is all about. And it will threaten you. And God will protect you. And God will guide you. And there will be triumph. And you'll experience Psalm 91. And you shall stand outraged at the darkness and stand and wanting just God's grace and powers to rage through your life in, in, in contrast to the counterfeited dark side and the seduction of the culture. It's an outrage, is it not? But then again, most believers will go to sleep tonight eating the candy, eating the stuff, the parties, and the things that have went on. And oh, the good Samaritan, the, the priest and the Levi, they just passed on by. The half-dead, bleeding, robbed man, the priest and the Levi, the religious people, they just passed on by. Number four, in your city, if there are satanic, ritually abused individuals, you've got the oldest of satanic covens, the old black flame, the old ancient brotherhood, the old order, and they're doing human sacrifice, and they're creating more, and it's bloodlined, and there's moms and grandmothers and grandkids involved now. If you find two or three victims and you keep working with them, you're going to find 15 more. And you're going to find mothers that are involved and you're going to find 20-year-olds uh, that are involved. You're going to find the victims. And you're going to realize then that the covens have been so satanically empowered to be secretive. That's how they operate. That's what the Bible unveils about them. Yet God willed for them to be found and exposed. 
because his hand of judgment was going to come. In your area of cults in the New Age, and, and many of that has surfaced in big ways, then you know that the, the city is full of uh, dark powers, even masqueraded. Number six, if the Spirit of God gives you insight and shows you and speaks to you, and he will, that, that will happen. God came to Ezekiel, and, and he didn't know, and God had to make it known to him. And seven, if God just simply rips it open like in Ezekiel 8, well, if you're willing, God will take you to see things. And the big issue is helping the victims and then standing against, because you can. The good news is you can stand against the darkness. So here it is, the top seven ways to find it. Number one, knowledge of what they are. Number two, knowledge that God wills to expose it. Well, that, that's Ezekiel 8. That's Ephesians 5. We're commanded to expose radical deeds of, dark, deeds of darkness. How can you expose what you won't look at? You never participate, but you don't hide from it either. And you expose what is there. Number three, knowledge and experience of advanced spiritual warfare. You know your authority, you know the armor, you know how to target, you know how to pray, you know how to rebuke, you know how, you know how to get people to pray together and pray against it and pray for God to, to bring a, a exposure and, and for God to bring it down. Number four, uh, be out of the streets evangelizing. This will help. This'll, this is powerful. That is a frontline attack on the dark side. Wherever, wherever things are going on, if you're out evangelizing the streets, if you're out evangelizing to night all over the place. You're going to be demonized people. You're going to be real witches. You're going to be people that claim to be druids. You might even meet a SRA, a Satan. You, you, just in the in the context of you, in the power of God advancing the kingdom, you're, in, you're going to engage everything. Number five, finding and helping SRA victims. Number six, keep the, during this time of the year, keep the praise and the worship up high. Number seven, targeted prayer. What you know out there is going on, covens and the rest, target it, lay it out, put it in a prayer manual and, and draw it out and, and pray and thunder and join others in the prayers. And you don't stop. You don't stop till darkness is down. Redemption is going. Acts chapter eight, uh, you see the results. I'm going faster because we have a lot to say in three minutes. Uh, top ways to pray. One, be filled with the word of God and the Holy Spirit. Two, pray to advance the kingdom of God. Three, pray to destroy demonic satanic sites and powers. Four, pray to see exposure. Five, pray for victims to be found. Six, pray against perpetrators. Seven, pray the Lord of Harvest to give you people, teams to go out in the field of, and do the evangelism that God has given us. Well, top three ways to Instead of just silence during this night for churches and whatever else, number one, pray and plan the biggest evangelistic event, music and food and drama and preaching and make, make, make massive, massive events and proclaim the gospel and, and pray for healing and pray for deliverance and, and watch what occurs and have people bring friends and watch, watch witches get saved and Satanists get saved. We've seen that all, all along all these years. Have a 31-day ablaze prayer for all of October. Have concentrated prayer during these last couple of days. And even tonight, stand and pray against the darkness, the advance of the gospel, and um, for you to be used by God. Pray for the victims. Pray for the perps to come down. We're coming down to the last two minutes today, and I have more to say. We have put out the outline of this uh, broadcast tonight on the Facebook page. You can go there and click on the... the um, well, you'll see where it says, uh, All Hallows Eve, what to do. Click on that and you'll get the outline that we have tonight. We love you. We have tons and tons of hours and hours training. Uh, but it involves, um, again, not allowing yourself to go silent or suppressed. Uh, but to let the power and grace and might and love and healing and the work of God to be extraordinary. And he will in your life. Hey, this is Russ Nizdar. Keep us in prayers. We might be out till late, late, late tonight. The Ragged Edge Radio Broadcast. Keep us in your prayers. Keep us in support. Thank you. Good night.